We're here with Skeeter Dimlet and Harley Worth that's going to try to make us a video. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Never done it before, but here we go. Hey kids, welcome to Haggle Barter Outfitters. Today we're going to go through making halibut logs. It's been a long winter here in Fairbanks and I'm prepping to go halibut fishing this summer. We're going to go down and see what we can dig up off the bottom of the ocean, but I hate it when you go out fishing and you got to make a chum bucket and you've got a bunch of slimy fish guts and stuff dealing with a bucket and slopping all over your boat. So I've come up with this little method. I call them halibut logs. So we're going to go through it with you here and uh, show you how I do it. There's many ways to do it, but I guarantee you, you'll catch more and bigger fish. So here, come off me over this way. I'll show you the ingredients real quick. We've got cornmeal. And I've got some butt juice here by Cruel Cure. The main ingredient I would kind of like is anise in that. Gives it a nice fragrance. And then what I've done is I've went and bought seafood cat food. And I've used this yes last year, but uh, honestly, I just looked at the ingredients on the bag and there's probably not that much seafood in it. All byproducts, your poor cat. I don't even know if I'd feed this to my cat. But it's got a nice scent trail and I like the kibbles in here. They're small kibbles, so they'll absorb, absorb the moisture and the oils, what we're going to do. And we'll make a slurry out of all these ingredients, some water and some leftover fish oil, some herring oil. And we'll grind up the fish. And I've already got a bunch ground up here, but what I'll do is I'll keep a few. It's easier if you have a meat grinder. All I've got is Rhonda's uh, osterizer, and if she knew I had it out here grinding rotten fish, uh, she'd probably, uh, there'd be a tail to tell there. So, hey, I'll just go ahead and quick knock this out. These are hard, like I say, in this blender. And the trick to this is make sure that your fish is frozen. Now these have, we've sat around and bs a little bit, so they're a little soft. But if they're froze really hard, if you had a meat grinder, this wouldn't matter. But in doing it in a blender, the harder the better. Just get all balled up in there like that. So we'll just take and knock that out. Like I say, I've done a lot of work for the boat this winter. Had the motor out, had some clutch problems last year. Had the uh, engine couple go out, we had to get towed in. Thankfully, there were a lot of good people down in Valdez. There was no problem getting somebody to come in. But, so, well, that didn't go that well. Like I say, I'll just show you that there's the grist, as we call it when we're home brewing. Fish chunks. Which, speaking of, I forgot the very first order of business. And that is, we better get a home brew going. Guy works up a powerful thirst here. Deals with all these fish guts. It makes you hungry too. It's all I can do not to eat that stuff. Mmm, boy, that's good. Wheat beer. Alrighty. Let me finish knocking this out. Don't forget to put the lid on. I almost did. I haven't done many of these videos, so you'll have to bear with me if I, if I look stupid. <laughs> anyway, my buddies always give me a hard time about doing things the hard way. That's the only way I know how to do it. So, you can see these are kind of soft. When they're obviously froze, they snap apart and then they'll churn up in there and they get a lot nicer grind on it. But any of your old bait, like last year when I come back and I have some bait left over, just throw it in the freezer and don't throw it away. Just keep it and then you can make bait with it rather than throwing it away. Of course, you always want to have fresh bait when you go out fishing. And I usually buy too much. So, better to have too much than not. So I know what would happen if I didn't have enough fish. Ron would tie me to the end of the hook and throw me overboard. That's what would happen. So I want to make sure I have all kinds of bait. 
Anyway, I guess I said, for the sake of not being too monotonizing, is that a word? Uh, we're just going to knock this out quick. It's not exactly what I'd want. We'll get, get through it quick here. Nothing like old fish smell. I wake up in the morning to that. Hey! Oh, look out! Keep blowing up! Run the quick lander. here but hey it's springtime breakups upon us here and got nothing better to do but find a little project to keep you busy and just keep knocking little chores out and then when it's time to go fishing it's all done rather than scrambling and uh, this is nasty by the way and here's some old oil that I saved out of my coolers when I brought fish home and the little bit in the bottom, I just threw it in a jar. I'm not sure that it's pretty ripe. I'll say that. So I'm going to dump that in the bucket. And then, where's my paper towels? What did I do with them? Over here. Alright. There we go. Now, I think what I'm going to do is add oatmeal and you want approximately two and three quarters cup of oatmeal per 2.75 liters of fish meat and cornmeal corn so and if you believe that i got some land i'd like to sell you <laughs> Some oceanfront property over in Arizona there. I'll leave my number at the end of the video so you can call me about the property. But I've got my canisters over here. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of them. I don't know. Just guessing how much of this stuff you need in here. The cornmeal will help adhere to the oils and as this when this will be frozen, so when it's thawing out, the cornmeal will release over a period of time. And these things will last you up to six, seven hours. So I fished them for quite a while, and when I pulled it up, and it was at least six hours, and there was just a little bit of left in the bottom of my chum bucket here when you pull this out of the out of the water. So it definitely lasts a long time before I get going on this. Egglehaus Brewery, BR549, get your wheat beers, your dunkles, your IPAs, high stick IPA, we have it all, and, okay, let's see, what do I want to do now, I don't really want to stick my hand in that, thing. that is nasty, and, and add a little water to her, like to drink. That's nasty. <laughs> Not sure about the cooler juice. I'm going to pour it in there anyway though. Because it's got oils in it. And that's what I'm kind of after. Is the oils of it all. Like that. And then. Butt juice. This will bring in the big butts. So if you like big butts. I cannot lie about that much. This is kind of expensive, but for the amount of bait you're getting here, if you break it down price-wise, it's probably not that expensive per log. So I'm not sure what that would cost. But I wasn't prepared enough. Let me go grab a 
I'll grab a, uh, some gloves, get a little reorganized here, and then we'll be right back. Stay tuned after this next. Welcome back to the next segment on Halibut Logs Haggle Barter Outfitters. First thing we got to do is uh, take care of business right here, get another brew going. It's been a long process, and I've parched little wild hog. Catch bigger fish and more fish. Secret sauce right there. But the first thing we got to do is my producer informed me that I was calling this oatmeal when in fact it's cornmeal. And it's Albers cornmeal. But you can use any kind of cornmeal you want. This is, happens to be a 40 ounce uh, box. Don't you hate videos when they take and drag shit out? Yeah. So, okay, anyway, we used, we wound up dumping the whole box in. And I had a big idea. I had some uh, herring oil on the boat there. I grabbed. I'm just going to dump some herring oil in here. This is very expensive. So I'll use, yeah, about a pint. Put a pint of that in there. Just for the more oil. I think the more oil, the better. And we're going to go ahead and uh, eliminate this butt juice. We'll pour the whole thing in there. That will bring the big ones. Mm. Love it. I love it. Let's get that out of there. There. Let me put my glove on. We're going to stir this up. and uh, We'd like to get a slurry, but you don't want it real thin. Otherwise, it runs out the bottom of my... Um, molds. So we're just going to mix this up. Got a piece of scrap iron off my scrap iron pile back there. As you can see the cornmeal. That cornmeal is a really a good carrier because each granule of that cornmeal is going to absorb the scent. As it melts, it's going to go with the current, and there'll be a lot of scent coming off of this thing for many hours. So this is really thick. I'm going to add some water to it, and what I want to do is add enough water to where that cat food will get soft, and uh, of course it'll expand. So it takes a little time to do that, as far as expanding. So. We're going to add a bit of water at a time, a little bit at a time, until I get about the right consistency, and then I'm going to let that set. And it'll be like a mush when you get done. I can already feel the tug on my line. Like I figured, we were just talking, I think each one of those molds maybe hold a couple of quarts. So if I make four quarts, or four gallons, it's obviously 16 quarts, and figures two quarts per, <laughs> two quarts per uh, container, you do the math. I'm too stupid. That's right back to my first comment. <laughs> I figured it would be just about right to fill all my containers in. You just got to kind of figure that out. Oh yeah, check this out now. It's coming around. It's looking pretty gooey. It's stirring up nicely. Got to get that cornmeal all through the whole thing. I see a couple of chunks of fish here. That was my my bad grind right at the end when they got a little soft. But like I say, if you got a meat grinder, it's way better. But good luck with getting that up from underneath your wife's evil eye because she will hang your genitalia from a tree if she finds you using her good meat grinder to grind this kind of stuff up. Or worse yet, she'll probably feed it to you for dinner that night and you won't even know. Oh yeah. Look at that. I'm liking it. 
coming along. I'm not sure if I should add a little more water to the trip. I test. think what I might do is just let that set there for a bit and then stir it some more and then see where it's at. Okay, moving on. I, I pre-assembled those. This is a piece of three inch PVC. And this is my chum bucket, slash whatever you want to call it. I made, it, made a little lid here and some hardware. I generally attach this to another fishing rod. I've got an old halibut rod that I use, and I'll set it not on anchor, which you could, but I like setting my uh, chum a little back closer to the action, so I'll go ahead of the boat a little bit, or even off the bow if it's straight down. Because the anchor, depending on how much road you have out, is like way far away from the boat. So I'll take, go on the bow, and it'll go straight down. And that's where I'll set this. It's closer to the baits that way. But we'll fill these with uh, our mixture. But how I do this is I'll duct tape off the bottom of these. It's just three inch PVC. And I'm sure you guys could come up with a better way to do this. Like I say, I like doing stuff the hard way, so this is right up my alley. Make a nice seal there, because if that's a little thin, that tends to leak out, obviously. And here's the rubber. I took a hole saw and sawed these out of a piece of wood, and they fit on here. So I just drop that in. There's a purpose for that. Stamp it down. So now we've got a wooden plug in the bottom of this, and it's hollow. So what I'm going to do is, once that, once, and we're going to come back to this, it'll be a few hours before that soaks up enough moisture to get a consistency. But we'll fill this with the mixture up to about there-ish, and then we stand these in the freezer and freeze them solid as we can get them. And then what we'll do is, We'll put them in a vise, take off the duct tape, and that rubber, that uh, wooden plug that we had, <laughs> we'll take an, a plastic mallet and just break that loose and push it, and it'll push that bait right out the end and into a vacuum sealed bag. And when it's done, it's going to look like uh, this. To your finished product, the Hagel Haas Halibut Log. So then, all you got to do, of course, obviously, is cut that, drop it right in there, screw on the lid, and drop it down to the bottom. So I really like this because the fact of there's no mess on the boat, you can do this on the deck, and then I just run around, run it up to the bow, and throw it off. There's not fish guts and juice and stuff all over your boat and uh, it just makes it really nice so with that we're going to let this soak and get uh, consistency we want as that fish as the uh, cat food melts or absorbs the water it'll turn to mush and then I'll just keep stirring it and adding a little bit and we want just a like a porridge or something oatmeal consistency and then we'll come back and we'll uh, put some in some containers for you. On the next episode, and if you like this video, please click the subscribe button up in the right hand corner. <laughs> Thanks for viewing. We'll see you when we're ready to put them into the container. All right, kids, we're back. It's the next morning. And I filled all these with my mixture it looks really consistent and really nice so i'll just fill the last one or save time on the camera then they're to the freezer and then we'll be back to uh, take them out of the canister but you can see it turned into pretty much a paste consistency and the easiest way to get them in these pvc containers is just uh, the good old-fashioned way the hard way, as we say. So, I came pretty close to get, guessing the amount. 
with my horrible math skills. There we go. That's the last one. say that uh, I uh, sprayed each one of these canisters with some WD before we put that in there and I think that will help them slide out so other than that that's all I have left and I'll get some kind of container and put them in there I bet you that would be good for shrimp bait so I can use the remainder up for shrimps or I could slice cut these off in little sandwich wafers or something and then have them frozen and just send them down to my shrimp pot. Probably be, probably work pretty good. So with that, I will get them in the freezer and we'll be back uh, probably tomorrow evening and uh, we'll put them in uh, vacuum packs and see the final product. Thanks for watching. Okay kids, here we are at the final step. It's been over a week I had them in the freezer, so they're good and thaw, frozen with all the oils and everything. It takes a little bit to get them nice and solid. So at this step, you want them to froze as good as you can. I'm going to take the tape off the end of my container, and with a mallet, I'm going to drive this out. It takes a little bit of effort. started. Just take the end of that hammer and drive it on out of there. If you want to support it so it don't break off. subscribe by clicking the button up here or over here or if I knew where to put a button on here that's where you could click it anyway thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next time <laughs>